How's it going, Hippo, Mega Goat, Teasel, and uh, Marcane, Mango, Nico Jazz, Health Angel, Sharpie? Yes, this was known as um, Championship Bowling in the States. Of course, we're gonna talk about that a lot. Health Angel finally beat the strategy game. Yes, 90 hours later, the hybrid front was beaten. With only one game over, so had I sucked at it, maybe it would have taken 120 hours or some shit like that. And uh, boogie woogie, guys, <laughs> it's gonna be, it, it's gonna be a good a good stream tonight. It's gonna be a good stream. I reckon the the lore part, this whole thing is probably gonna take approximately uh, 10 to 20 times more than the actual game is gonna take. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Chubo? Yeah, I'm, I'm much more into the boogie woogie theme than the very generic one, but we'll see about that. Well, 90 hours for a Mega Dry strategy game is fucking insane. Let me tell you, it's not, it's not normal. It's, <laughs> it's not normal, dude. No, I, I'm, I don't know, dude. I don't know if there's another Mega Dry game that takes that much without ever failing. Like, without having to restart content. And I did that only once. Maybe Master of Monsters, I don't know. Anyways, we're here today to talk about Boogie Woogie Bowling, but um, about Visco more in general. It's gonna be a lot of uh, YouTubing stuff. I take a, a wild approach here and just steal content from the tube. So, if you might you might ask, well, if I wanted to watch YouTube, I'd wouldn't be on Twitch right now. And uh, you would be right, but no, just kidding. We're gonna take a look at um, the, the, the entirety of Visco's video games output because it's it's very interesting. I bet there's at least one game you guys are familiar with. Uh, it did a bunch of arcade ports, it had a couple of NES games for those of you that dig that stuff. Half kidding, you know me. And only a handful of uh, Mega Drive games, just just to in fact, as far as I know. As usual, all the information disclosed in this stuff is just my research from websites and shit, so there's gonna be probably inaccuracies and shit, but it's all for fun, so just let me know if uh, you know better, right? Alright, so I got my file here, some of you already took a peek with the spoiler. By the way, that is my own program bot there. <laughs> I made the bot myself. Kind of. Okay. Alright. Let me get let me get this stuff right here. So Boogie Woogie, I found out is actually a, a, a musical genre. Thought it was just a, a dance type. It is a music associated with dancing, right? And I had a video ready, I don't know if I'm gonna get muted for it, but I think I'm gonna play it because why the fuck not? Here to have fun. This is not YouTube, guys. So. Yeah, get a load of that. All right. <laughs> We're probably gonna get muted, but I don't give a fuck. Okay, so this is Boogie Woogie, right? These guys are dancing, obviously. What's up, Carl? Alright, I'll just talk over this. So of course, it's associated with dancing mainly, so much so that even the lyrics to one of its earliest hits, Pint Up's Boogie Woogie, are just instructions for the dancers. Now, this became popular in the late 1920s and was developed in African-American communities in the 1870s. The king instrument, as you can tell from this video, would be the piano. That's actually... I'm not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna further pursue the... Uh, the search for the boogie-woogie lore, so I'm actually gonna put a full stop to that. <laughs> gonna move on to the second part of this. That Visco Shark. But we're gonna keep this playing because it's, it's I think it's pretty hilarious. Right. 
Now, Boogie Woogie Bowling is a game released on the 17th of September. 1990, no, December, sorry, 1993. With a Sega Mega Drive by Visco. Now, Visco both developed and published the game, but they had Mentrix Software handle the publishing overseas. And I got a little logo for you as usual, but the more important one would be uh, this one. Now, there isn't much info about Mentrix Software. They were, however, based in uh, California and published three Visco games for the Mega Drive, which would be Championship Bowling, uh, Caliber 50, and Wardner. Uh, Wardner No More is special. I don't know if Wardner No More is special is actually the, the Japanese name for that, but that that is it. Now, now there's a scan from the 13th issue of Sega Visions, an American magazine that seems to suggest the game was due for June 93 in the States, and by game I mean this game, the American version of Boogie Woogie Bullying called Championship Bullying. Now, June 93 would actually mean six months prior to the original version, right? And that, that would be actually weird. So uh, th it was probably um, just postponed and delayed with that. That's right, they stripped the game of its boogie-woogie theme and gave it a very generic one instead, calling it Championship Bowling. Uh, this only came out in America, so no uh, European, Brazil, or Asia release. Or Australia, none of that, just America, as far as I know. This is only a Genesis, strictly Genesis game. I just noticed there is that Mentrix software logo there on the on the back spine. The tradition of Visco not being credited, uh, I guess, continues, which is weird. Because this is past that first phase of theirs we're going to dip into pretty soon, which is most interesting, where they were basically... Mostly just contractors and wouldn't just get their name on stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's an old command. Alrighty. So I, I should have um, comparison screenshots here because they replace the, albeit very Japanese, interesting characters with generic Johns and Lindas. Now I should have pictures of that. Yeah, there we go. Now this is the character the character selection screen for the for Boogie Woogie Bowling. And this is the character selection screen for championship bowling. <laughs> now the pixel art isn't that bad. I, I th they probably just read it in themselves, right? But uh this is what you get on the American version, so they let's walk the characters. Obviously we're gonna play Boogie Woogie Bowling, but my assumption, because I've played this game, um with friends, a one, maybe two occasions, so barely played this game. Never tried a single player, but my guess is this game probably isn't much about the single player, and you can beat it in 20 minutes. That is my guess, but we'll see. Don't spoil. I see Sharp in chat probably played this or knows this already. Because he's American. <laughs> right? They did change it a lot. Now, what I know, uh, I'm just going to follow my script here. I know they, they actually changed the music too, but we'll have a chance uh, to talk about that later. I'd be down for 20 hours of this, Angel. I'd be down for it. I think this is good music too. So they got rid of the music too. Well, they didn't quite delete it. They just used a new score instead. So I think there's two different soundtracks because they got rid of the Boogie Woogie theme. So I'm going to be most interested into uh, trying out the American version right after I beat the Japanese version. So maybe even just tonight, you know. The next game is going to be Chaken or Chaken or Chakan. I would say just Chaken, but uh, the, 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 the website with the author says it's Chaken. So I'm pretty hyped about that. I love that game. I'm pretty decent at it. I've beat it a number of times. But for tonight, it's only going to be bowling. <laughs> I hope you're happy about that. Yeah, I did reject Jack. I was busy with uh, the lady's birthday. Jack wanted to meet. <laughs> soon, Jack. Soon. Soon. All right. Where were we? Right. Regional differences. Now, even though the, the choice here to change all of that stuff is probably unpopular, 
I think it's still interesting that we get two different versions of the game uh, to look at and, and feel because if you change the graphics of the characters and the music, it's a whole new feel, right? Now, the original differences to me might very well be one of the most interesting things to note in the scenery of uh, home console games, especially the more mainstream ones that saw worldwide distributions and a tons, ton of games from various houses like the Mega Drive. But in some cases, there's a lot of cool, interesting um, regional differences in arcade games as well. Although not as interesting, because they mostly pertain uh, difficulty fixes, that kind of stuff, which is interesting to feel, but boring to discuss, you know? I don't know, not really. It depends if you try hard enough, I guess that's, that's cool. So, about the game developers, Visco, let's... Uh, Let's bring that back up. Now, Visco did quite a number of arcade games in the past and some console outputs and collaborations. You're probably going to be familiar with at least one of their games. Now, they founded in 1982 and instituted themselves as a society in 1983. They seem to have started off as a small contractor company one of those that had the technical skills but no publishing capabilities, so their games would be published by a more known company. In their case, as we're gonna see, it would be Taito, which is a very well-known company. They then developed an arcade board called the SSV, jointly with Seta and Sammy, hence the name of the board, SSV, Seta Sammy Visco. Now, one of some uh, arcade aficionados between you guys, you've probably heard of the SSV board. Now that was a board used from 1993 to 2001, referring to the releases of the games that were built around that board, of course. But I'm actually unaware of any technical specs about the SSV board or who actually worked on it. For all I know, Visco maybe only had their names on it but didn't actually contribute to the development of the board, even though I find that unlikely. We don't actually know. I don't know about that. It is, however, vo worth mentioning that uh, SETA already had their own board and would in total produce three different models from 1987 to 2004. You know, different boards from SETA themselves. Kind of like uh, SEGA had all that bunch of different um, boards and revisions of their sub-models. Stuff like that. Now, what I want to do here is I want to have a nice stroll through Visco's output, right? I want you to join me because we're going to have a very nice stroll through their games. It should be interesting because it's mostly arcade stuff, including some cool Neo Geo material towards the end. So I'm going to bring up Chrome here, which doesn't seem to work. But I'm on it. There we go. There we go. Shamelessly from um, YouTube here, of course, guys. All right. I should have chat up, though. Little times to catch on the memes. All right. Yes, I do have two light guns for PS1. I actually have three. This one is a Predator 2. Cost me a hopping 10 bucks at a used marketplace. So you can play Project Orn Howl because it doesn't support a normal gun gun. I actually have three. I have three. All right. So this is their first game in 1986, Panic Road. Now, I'm very actually hyped to look through all these games. You know, I, I might just play one or two. Why not? I, I, I know a couple games of theirs that I want to play. Uh, Ganryu for the Neo Geo systems and um, uh, Block Carnival. We're going to see that later. I want to try out some of these games. They look fucking awesome. Okay, so this game is Panic Road. Let's have a quick look. Should let the videos run as I play because we're just taking a look. Oh shit. Oh yeah, this is awesome. This is actually pinball. So the first game, as far as we know, is actually pinball. This is probably loud. Let me know. I dig the sound. 
I dig the sound. It's a mega goat. So this is Panic Road. It's actually labeled uh, not not only Taito as we've seen, but also Seibu Kahatsu of Raiden fame. Raiden, you know. It looks pretty chill. Obviously, shit physics, but <laughs> it looks like it has enough meme value to be an interesting player. Yeah. So, Seibu Kahatsu title license, but it's actually Visco's first game, as far as we know. Now, we're gonna move on to 1989, so that would be three years later. I probably missed something in between there but we're not here to write a book we're here to check out on new games and interesting shit and have fun so again as you can see title labeled now this is maze of flot no idea what flot's supposed to be but you have a car this guy does a 1cc credit but it's actually a maze kind of game as you can see this is just attraction mode Lower the YouTube audio, probably. Yeah, let me know if that's better. So some kind of really cool maze-based game where you lay down stuff as obstacles for the bad dudes. Look at that. Grand Theft Auto ain't got shit on this game. Look at that. Look at that freaking font for the high scores. That's pretty good. Alright, moving on. Steel 1989. Steel title labeled. This is a well-known game, I suppose, among uh, Shumap fans. Of course, no shame in stealing YouTube content here. Shout out to Baron Rajo. <laughs> uh, this is Asuka and Asuka, right? Or Asuka and Asuka, if your Japanese is particularly bad. A uh, rather generic, generically themed uh, shmup. I don't want to say generic looking one because it's actually very good looking. Pretty much like every Visco games where they put effort on. I think it's good looking. You'll notice even Boogie Boogie Bowling. Um, it's really vibrant and, and nice looking for being a fucking bowling game. <laughs> right? There's not much to say here. I guess we can spoil our soul the ending. Why not? Oh, look at that. Through your actions, the Galaxy Hyter War Invasion was obstructed. However, without defeating the Galaxy Hyter boss, Lanyan, the second and third War Invasion will surely continue. You have no time to rest. That was a good case of English, but maybe that's just a bad name for a villain. Anyways, let's take a look at the next game they did, which is I shoot a blaster. 1990 so you can see still title still very good looking and it's still shmup i'm familiar with this game because it's got a really good music i actually know the soundtrack to it but i don't know really the game or stuff but meh one of those games one of those games right now, the next game I'm gonna show you is a Thunder and Lightning, which is also in 1990, but this is actually an NES game. So it's very much different from what we've seen so far, isn't it? Now in this period, perhaps living in Taito and looking for fortune elsewhere and with our contractors, Visco seems to have made three games published by Romstar for the NES. Two of these were actually developed in cooperation with Pixel, I think. This one was not one of them. So much so that one of the next games we're gonna see, uh, Block Carnival for the arcade, is another um, Breaker? Is this what you call this? Breaker clone? Well, Arkanoid kind of game, so to speak. Yo, Alice, what's up? Good to see you. What's up, Green Jean? So those three games would be uh, Thunder and Lightning, this one, World Champ and Cowboy Kid. Let's have a look at World Champ. Right. 
Super boxing great <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is very eloquent. Oh, it says it again. Super boxing great fight. Okay, cool. Good job on that, Green Jean. Good job. Alright. I'm gonna move on to uh one of their most known games because it actually spawned what would be their first series you could say it is drift out 1991 game would land on other systems such as the super nintendo uh i suppose thanks to its layer rotation provided by the mode 7 because as you can see the game makes a pretty sick use of that kind of mechanic how it scales the layer, the background too, when you uh, zoom out. This is of course the original, um, look at that, Toyota, Michelin, Shal. This is the original arcade game, of course. Fish. Oh, fish. Who's that? Green Jean, thank you for the host. All right, here. Drip that. Pretty cool game. Let's spoil ourselves with the ending. Uh, is that font in Italian colors? It is. Add the Italian flag to it. Alright, so. Oh, look at that. They are kissing. <laughs> Oh, I want to see who the composer is for this. Maybe we can uh, find a uh, a match. Nope. Not really. Special thanks to Philippine Bob. Philippines Knob. Okay. So, still in 1991, confirming Visco's involvement in the home console market came both Caliber 50, which is this game, and World Nerd No More is special, their first two Mega Drive games. Now these are both arcade ports, right? And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Caliber 50 is a SETA, it's a SETA arcade game. It further shows Visco and SETA's mutual involvement with each other. Uh, the Mega Drive game is not actually a good port though, I mean... This is the port, this is the Mega Drake game, but uh, eh, talk more about those two games when um, when we get to them, right? Because we're going to play them on this channel. This is uh, Wardner, Warden Lomori. Right, let's move on. 1992, now another game, the third and last NES game they made, to the best of my knowledge, another game in conjunction with Pixel. Another development company on the NES, Cowboy Kid. This is Cowboy Kid. Interesting to note here, totally irrelevant, but interesting, is that the graphics were made by a certain Tony Gonzalez, who is also under special thanks for Earth Joker, uh, UN Defense Earth Joker. Uh, I mean, Earth Shocker. <laughs> I wrote down Earth Joker. I think it's Shocker. I get confused. Let me check. Earth Shocker, yeah, okay. I got confused with the katakana and wrote down Earth Joker. It's all good. Uh, catching up, catching up. Okay. Now this Tony Gonzalez has its own like personal website actually turned into a, a oh dude oh I swear this website worked yesterday it was like a memorial because it died and had pictures uh, of him dressing up and scaring kids it was actually pretty quality anyways 1992 block carnival <laughs> 
This is a very cool fucking game I wanna play. Look at oh, I gotta watch this from the start though. From the very start. Cowboy Goemon. Look at that, it shows you the boss and where you're supposed to attack it, like it's weak point and shit. Yep. Yep. This is a two-player mode video, it's the only one that didn't look like shit that I could find. It's uh, it's pretty cool, let's play it at uh, double the speed. For fun. <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah, I want to see how crazier it gets without spoiling too much. It actually has themes. It uh, keeps things interesting. It's not one of those super boring uh, breaker clones where you're left just trying to destroy the final block. But th the stages take forever. And it's just a mess. A test of your patience. This one actually looks fun. Very easy going, very fun. All right, still 1992, Andro Dunos, or whatever you're supposed to pronounce that. Mosquito, please. Now, this game seems to have a very badass soundtrack. Let's check it out. Yep. Pretty jammy YM soundtrack. FM synth Yamaha sound chip I love so much. We find in the Mega Drive as well. Not that most of the previous games didn't have this chip too. It's just the music is so good in this one. I actually know much about this game other than the, the soundtrack is cool as fuck and the Right work is amazing. Let us move on though. Still 1992. The game is called Galmedes. It's another shmup. Time back to what we've seen from them so far, which is actually vertical shmups. Tate mode. Alright. We actually have constantly, consistently the Visco logo. Dude, they seem to have good English though. They're not one of those English companies, you know. These are well written. Yep. Definitely got an English speaking guy to write this. <laughs> Labor desperately. Launched Electro Projectile Thermal Osmotic Nullifier. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Vivid Zero, what's up? I'm still... No, it was just very fast. I'm not. <laughs> it's a very fast schmuck. Yeah, I gotta shave. Alright, now we get to Earth Shocker 1993. You and Earth the first... Uh, <laughs> you and the fans. Earth Shocker. What's up, Jay? There we go. Another horizontal shmup after uh, Andrew Dunos. So, uh, briefly check it out. Most interesting in the music. It's very good, and it's. Uh, I can always appreciate one of those. Yeah, Balkan with an A. I can always appreciate one of those shmups where the shooting sound effect doesn't completely overpower the music. In this one, we actually don't have it at all. I, I don't mind, actually. You, actually you, you only have the sound effect when, you, when you're hitting something. Oh, check the bass line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Thunder Force. Well, arcade games could support more channels, I suppose. Alrighty, that is Earth Shocker. I think uh, w definitely one of their most known um, shmups. 
but surely not the top known one. I think that would be Vasara. I'm not enough of an expert on uh, Seta, um, Visco Mother. Right, now we're getting to the really interesting stuff. So much so that I have to go on Nico Nico. YouTube will not cut it. So I'm actually curious how I'm gonna capture this. Right, I don't actually know how to read this. Morikin will know, but this is the name of the game and it's a Go game. Oh, it actually works pretty good, the capture, doesn't it? Kira Kira Go... Uh, Something Narabe, something. Yep, Gomoku Narabe. Right. So this is the first of the Visco games that interest me the most because they are most interesting to to talk about and look at. Right. So it's Go, but with uh, pixel anime girls. Now Nico Nico doesn't let you skip ahead much, so I don't actually know. Yeah, high quality on Nico as usual. I don't really know if this has a storyline or stuff, but there's gonna be more cool shit on that matter soon. Oh, it's it's not go. Oh, does it have a name or did they came up with it themselves? Cool music, but this is not the YM sound chip I know and love. But then again, am I completely sure this is the original arcade version? It is actually, the video says so. But this board did not come with a superior Master Race YM sound chip. Oh, it's called Gomoku Narabe, and you just have to line up five in a row. Oh, okay, we have a very similar game we had, used to have, in Italy. Pretty stupid, it's called Forza Quattro. You have to slide things in a top of a... Fuck it, we're gonna look at that now. <laughs> okay, everybody brace for Italian games. Yeah. It's... It's this. No, shit, no. Okay, so you slide, uh, you see that? You slide like that, you, two players, and uh, if you make four, either horizontally or that, uh, that guy just won, see? The yellow guy won, see that? He made four diagonally, so that's, that's that, yeah. <laughs> I just had to show you. <laughs> I was already on YouTube anyways. Connect four, okay, so it's not an Italian thing. I should have figured connecting four things together was not an Italian exclusive game, right? <laughs> Fear Kevin. Okay. Let's try to. Yeah, let's try to see some more screens from this. Okay, chapter two. Oh, look at that. Chapter two. My name is. Something Gawa Kozue. Can't wait to play with you. A green hair anime. Where's Fapna? When there's some green hair anime. Asegawa. Oh well. Hasegawa. Or Asegawa. The music is very jamming in this game, but it comes in an inferior hardware package. Alright, Nico is actually letting us skip ahead. Let's take the chance to spoil ourselves with all the anime girls. They actually get naked? They do not. Well, aren't you all soon? Next, and then I couldn't read. Chapter 3 Ikaru. Nakayama. She is a waitress. <laughs> Do you think we're gonna, we were gonna look at? Uh, actually, I knew. It was all planned. Oh, it's time! You get like a hundred seconds to play. 
Is that cumulative time or is that just the player's time? Hmm. Uh, what's up, Karu Tenjin? No, I don't. I don't know how to play Go actually. Wait, we, we missed a girl. There is a Mega Drive Go game, so I'm gonna have to learn eventually. But this is not actually Go. This is a uh, uh, Go Narabe. I forgot. This is a. Um, fuck is this called again? Gomoku Narabe. The name of the game. Zanki, what's up? Have the girl with freaky eyes. Music changed? No, it did not. This guy actually beat the game. So you get a pop shot of the legs when you beat them. It's very softcore, I dig it. Oh, look at that background, dude. <laughs> Chinese dress, Great Wall of China. But she's got blue hair. <laughs> I dig that, I dig that. Oh, Hawaii, Filipina, Suzuka, no, Suzuka, Suzuka. <laughs> <laughs> Music is hella catchy, dude. Very, very catchy. I am showing all Visco games that I could find, yes. This is the only one so far that we're, we've been watching for more than 20 seconds for obvious reasons. <laughs> I am extremely fascinated by it. All right, yeah. So you can actually play this game. Uh, I would assume it's dumped, but you can actually play this game because you just need to. Yeah, see, you he won because he made a line of five, and uh, it's just uh, that's a freaky face. <laughs> like the body was. <laughs> the body. Look at. <laughs> Look at the portrait, dude. The right eye is just fucking emerald gem. The body was all well made, and then the the, the fucking face is all messed up. <laughs> it's like a screwed up action figure. So he won because he just got five uh, things in a line. Really, pretty easy game to to, to play actually. I know about how to beat. Yes, this is trip bowling. Ooh, is that the final boss? Ween. Her name is Ween. <laughs> Alright. It's like a princess or something. Oh, yeah, that's right, it's Otello, isn't it? Is it is Otello an Italian game? I don't think so, right? It's known... Uh, it's an international game. Oh, clear? Yeah, so you beat the game. Does it say something? Like... Maybe play hard mode. Uh, nah. No one CC. Oh, they got signatures. Imagine how funny if now it credits another company. It's not actually Visco. <laughs> Quality staff roll here that's not actually rolling. <laughs> Sound? June? Uh, maybe the video just crapped out. Like it's supposed to. Yeah, it's just, it just got choppy as fuck. The Nico video is full choppy, but we never realized. <laughs> Alright, so that was uh, Kira Kira Gomoku Narabe. 
something something like the title keeps going gomoku narabe is the name of uh, this game they didn't come up with them themselves thanks morikin i didn't actually know that <laughs> it's not like you can keep the the window closed with this heat can you right so the next two games are gonna be in youtube and then we're gonna go back into nico nico guys so uh, look forward to that now the next game we're gonna take a look at is called Kokon Tozai Eto Monogatari. I do not know what that means. The music is so good, holy shit. Oh, this is one of those stretched videos. People don't know how to upload on YouTube. There's actually more on the sides. Dude, the music is very freaking good. Yeah, yeah, this is one of those, um, I remember this. You know. You might be like, uh, boring. I actually love this kind of games. It's just not the game you probably want to watch on Twitch, right? But we're just having a look. Again, it's cut on the sides. This guy uploaded the video in uh, 16 by 9. I'm not gonna fix it. You have to refix it afterwards, but pretty cool. Check out the music. Wanna find like a good track? It has like one music track. <laughs> Fuck! Oh, there you go, the, the pinch. You're in a pinch. Alright, next up, 1995. Goal, goal, goal. What is Kale? This is a soccer game. Oh, we moved on to Neo Geo hardware. Cool. I don't think the other one was Neo Geo, was it? It was not. I actually don't know any Neo Geo games that have uh, a YM sound chip. I would be interested. I do know this credit coin though. Football. Sex Agenary. Good job, Zanki. Good job. That's why you were the chosen one to translate Hybrid Front. Right. So, I mean, not much to, to look at here. These are the credits. I wonder if we can... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna take this chance to... That's a nice effect, though. I'm gonna take the chance to see if we can uh, check out a composer or maybe associate it with the name of... Because I'm blind. I don't know anything about the composer for Boogie Boogie Bowling. And you know I hate that. That's the, like the one thing I like to research about games, is the composer. So we're gonna have a little look here until we, we get to that. It, dude, it wasn't mentioned. <laughs> it wasn't mentioned. <laughs> Sound. Act Japan. Okay. Dig the, the Visco on the ball. Visco always has uh, good English, it seems. Really good? I don't know, dude, it actually looks good. But, I don't know. Old soccer games? I don't know how playable they are. Okay, back on Nico video. Nico Nico, because this is super real Hanafuda. Koi Koi Shima Show. Translated to super real Hanafuda. Let's make love love, right? Koi as in love, not as in carp, right? <laughs> two! Okay, this is the two. This is number two, but it's gonna work. Hanafuda is a card game that I don't know how to play. I wouldn't mind learning. 
And the issue with Hanafuda is it doesn't have games on consoles normally. Not normally, at least. I'm sure Hanafuda would be a lot more user friendly than Mahjong. Quite some, yeah, but. I don't know, 10 games is in, across 5 platforms is not quite some. <laughs> you can probably gauge how uh, bountysome, fruitful and prolific a game genre is by measuring how many games of that genre are on, are, are on the PlayStation 1. How many Hanafuda games are on the PlayStation 1? That's not a rhetorical question, I actually don't know. Yeah, I'm digging the, the wonky style on the Visco Waifu's Vividor. It's like they they have the art style down, they have the skills, but they just don't know how to draw waifu faces. Koi 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 Will you do Koi Koi? Is Koi Koi like a uh, Richie for Hanafuda? I think the car that says Visco is pretty cool. Need a teleporter, what's up? <laughs> Alright. So we're going to spend a little bit more time watching uh, these rather than their... Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, <laughs> Okay, of course, because this is super real Hanafuda, just like super real Mahjong, they actually strip. <laughs> Suddenly chat burst. What's up, Ragadum? Suddenly Teasel wants to play Hanafuda. Cloudy music, what's up? <laughs> the frame that brought out all the lurkers. I still want to see more of this game, though. Burst. <laughs> Fuck is that Yoshi? <laughs> That's from Tetris Attack, Carl, isn't it? Or um, uh, Puzzle the Pawn? Wait, Panel the Pawn. Puzzle the Pawn is a. Um, we're gonna talk about Puzzle the Pawn because it's a Visco game, actually. Waka? Ah, oh, what the fuck is Waka? It's still the same girl, but she gets naked later. Right. Oh, okay. The, the nipples are actually censored. So, that's no big deal. If we were pirate, what's up? You, dude, you, like, the art style... They got good art style, just the faces. They, they cannot get the faces right. Everything else looks okay. That shot looks kind of okay, but they just cannot get the faces right. Everything else is, is, is alright, they just cannot do faces, it seems. So that is Super Real Hanafuda, Koi Koi, Shimasho, uh, Nico Nico, sadly doesn't let us uh, skip ahead much. It's not like we can see the ending, unless we see it through the whole video. And maybe we're not gonna do that. Uh, gonna move on to the next game they made, according to my fictitious but probably half accurate uh, chronology and history of uh, Visco titles. Now this is Stormblade, another vertical shmup. Look, not even the male guys have normal faces. Those are kind of fucked up as well. Dude, is that all like... Look how good the graphics are in this game. That's, that's all pixel art, right? Can't tell because the video is so tiny. If I enlarge it, then you won't be able to see, but... Background in this game is fucking out of control. Very good. Alright, so that's Stormblade. Oh, dude, the next game. You're gonna love the next game, guys. Next game is Lovely Pop Mahjong. Jong Jong Shima Sho. That's promising. That is also on Nico. That also has Visco waifus. 
They are well drawn, but the faces. Is this Mahjong? Lovely Pop. Okay, yeah, this is Lovely Pop Mahjong. Well then, quickly register and become a member. Yeah. Oh, introduction to the Visco waifus. Like they really wanted to get good at drawing them, but <laughs> Look at that face and those eyes. It's just funny. That's too loud. So it's Mahjong. I've been watching this channel since uh, more than just a few months. You've seen me play loads of Mahjong, so. Arcade Mahjong is, of course, as you can see, not only cheat, but also easy to get a monster hand right away, such as this one. You guys are ready in Richie for a really big hand. Well, Tenpa is what I should say. And it's two player, yes, like most arcade games. I'll call it. Yep. Hold the con. Richie. And the Richie. That is his. Okay. Mm, body, body. Body, body. It tells you your weight, and there is a real time reaction from your opponent. Looks like a very well made game. No. Oh! The one. Oh. No. Look at the hands. Even the animations, like everything is, is good in their art style for the anime stuff. It's just the, the, the faces, they cannot get faces right. It's baffling and interesting. So she's a... She's a pop singer. They even got the anime poses. Can't do that one because I don't have... <laughs> Any hair to pull up? Seven daughter. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, she's taking off their sock. Aww. Her socks, dude. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> dude, it's hot, Vivid Zero. What do you want? She's wearing a costume suit. So that's okay. Oh, she's getting... Taking pictures off? Oh, she's posing. Okay. OVG, what's up? Just at the right time, OVG. was the game it wasn't censored oh look at that you, you have to to win the race to get to get to get more oh there's a purple hair waifu oh so if he had gotten first place he would have gotten boobs Okay, you can buy power-ups, like any arcade Mahjong game. More fucked up faces. <laughs> Shortest track. The name to this game is Lovely Pop Mahjong. Lovely Pop, Lovely Pop Mahjong, Jong Jong Shima Show. All right, I think we've seen enough. Is it the same girl? No, this is uh, an actress. This is a new girl. What about... Okay. The candid girl. 
All right, we're going to move on on to Breakers. 1996. Now, this game uh, has really good graphics, so I tried to get a video with um, good enough quality. The pixel art and the animations in this fighting game are really good. Oh, Visco games. Not just Visco, but Visco games. This game actually one of their most known because it spawned a, a series of games and even got released on the Neo Geo CD. It is Breakers. It was worth getting a video with the intro. Even gonna show all the cool characters. Twice. Maybe there are two of those. We're almost done, by the way. We're not even done with Nico. It's gonna be one more Nico Nico video. Alright, the how to play took very long. Want to look at the characters? Dude, fucking YouTube ads. Okay. Piel, Condor, Rila, Tia, Alcyon the Third, Mahal, Dao Long, and Sho. I would definitely play as Rila. We were gonna get a fight with her. There we go. Rila. Oh, she's like the the Blanca wannabe. Yep. Well, didn't maybe Koneta play this game on uh, Nintendo for the Neo Geo CD? Maybe it was another game. I think it was this one. I don't know. Anyways, let us move on to the next game, which is uh, Monster Slider. This is one nobody probably has seen before because it's very curious. I think this is another one of those uh, 16 by 9 great uploads. Yep, it is. We'll have to deal with it. Yes, this has a console port on the Saturn, doesn't it? Yes, this is a Sega Saturn. Which I forgot to write down. Let's hear that again. Nice. <laughs> All right. It's it's a uh, it's I don't know how, how I feel about this game. It's It's uh it's all diagonal and shit. <laughs> Why are all the tiles diagonal? It makes me feel a little bit sick. This actually looks fine in 16 by 9. This might be meant for this resolution. Nah, I don't think so. Anyways, that is Monster Slider, as we said, it did get a um a Saturn port. Ooh, now that I think about it, I remember, forgot to note down that, uh, let's, let's go check that. Visco was actually involved with a cancelled, never released, uh, Mega CD, Mega CD game. They got after his load to respond, so we're gonna move on to, uh, Puzzle the Pawn. Yet another Neo Geo hardware game. Ah, uh, yes, Zenki. Visco was a very prolific arcade video game developer. And uh, Boogie Woogie Bowling is actually their only original game on Mega Drive. The other two games that got out on the Mega Drive, Caliber 50 and Warner Nomori Special, are actually two ports. 
And everybody knows this game, right? Except it's not puzzle bubble. I wonder what the deal was with this. I didn't look into it, but um As as we've seen clearly, uh as we've seen, let's skip ahead. As we've seen, Visco started out making games for Taito. And everybody knows Taito made uh, Puzzle Bubble, right? I wonder what the deal was with this. If they uh, had some kind of agreement or something. But it's not just a, a blatant clone. It couldn't be just a blatant clone because, as I said, Visco started off making games for Taito. Like, Taito games, the first games we've seen would say Taito, but on research they're actually visco games lord shadow caster what's up hitch pasky get fucked pasky <laughs> get fucked pasky hitch thank you for the host the raid welcome guys peter tech welcome maybe you're confusing with panel the pawn mori which is japanese tetris active now, if I were a real weeb, I could say Tetris Attack is the American panel the pawn. But yeah. Okay, so title published it. No wonder. No wonder. Alright. Let's not dwell on this too much. Let us go back to Shoggy. Oh shit, I meant to say to Nico. Well, I spoiled it. This is Shoggy. But. Because they figured out they couldn't get the anime waifu faces right to any degree. They decided to fully drop those in favor of actual women. <laughs> oh. Now this looks cool though. Like it's, it's not like frame by frame shit, it's all fluid. I wonder if it's like that during the game as well. Oh, look at that. She bowed. <laughs> That's the idea, what's up? This guy is like... Good. <laughs> Shoggy? I think. I have no fucking clue how to play Shoggy, but I'll have to learn. There is a grand total of one Shoggy games on Mega Drive, much like there is a grand total of one Pachinko games on Mega Drive. Oh, Dasiati, you did not miss it. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> you did not. This is the pre, the pre-game. Yeah, it looks like chess. My first exposure to Shogi is obviously in the manga uh, Ranma, where uh, the parent, the fathers, their fathers would play um, Shogi. Then Genma, aka the panda, would get mad, and then uh, he would. Oh, he got a horse. Is that because he got the. She looks owned, dude. <laughs> he looks fucking owned. I have no idea how this works, but it looks super cool. Uh, Shikinjo had a set with Shogi Tots if you play it as the ninja. This, this one doesn't look as pretty as the other player. It's something about her nose. Did they have like a, a... An overview of the opponent before you, you fight them? Trying to say opponent. I didn't say... Notice how I didn't say girl or lady or grill or waifu. I do. She's gonna bow. <laughs> Only guy fish. She must. What's up, Sky Shadow? Thanks for the host. That was funny. All right. Can maybe get. Isn't that the same one? No, that's in the preview. That's why her face is familiar. Got a puffy face. I like puffy. You got wrecked, but you still thanked us. That's how wrecked you got. Bonus game. What? Is it like memory? Hey, what the? This guy's cheating. He doesn't give a fuck.
Well, I guess if you flip them all, it, there's no penalty for getting the X. The Red Cross. The Super King. Chicken Joe. <laughs> nicely done. Thank you. I missed out on a hundred more nicely done than Chicken Joe, because that game has an extra hundred levels. Only Zinnick beat. Uh, Chess with microtransactions. Oh, could not play video. We maybe ran out of Nico Nico bandwidth, which is okay because that was the last one. <laughs> oh shit, it wasn't! There's the ultimate one we need to watch still. Alright, let's try to have it recharged by closing it. Now I'm on Sega Retro now because I'm gonna type Visco. I'm gonna get the name before I forget of that game that was unreleased. World Rally! For the Mega CD, World Rally is an unreleased top-down racing game for the Sega Mega CD. So much like uh, their own Drift Out. It was announced before the system launched and was cancelled for currently unknown reasons. Planned release date, 91-92. Hmm. Okay. That is cool. Let us uh, go back to what we were doing, which is not Monster Slider. But rather, the next one would be Plate Memory. Now, I forgot to prepare media here, but that's fine because there's no... Um, there's no pictures of this game because it's not a game. It's one of those print club boots known in Japan as a Prikra, you know, abbreviation of print club. So to give you an idea, if I type that, this comes out, one of those boots where you can take, uh, see those boots, where you can take pictures, and you can like enlarge your eyes and make yourself look uh, either or extremely hideous or extremely uh, cute. Yeah, I mean, they're making tails look cute, so there's that. So that is what they made, and it's called uh, Plate Memory, I don't know if they gave you a little hack, uh, tag. Duck tag, maybe. But that's it. Now, there is actually another 1998 game they made. So these guys were very, very, very um, prolific. Called Gourmet Battle Quiz. Cooking King. All right. Now, this is the maximum of uh, just swag that they probably pulled in their lives. I'm going to repeat that title. Gourmet Battle Quiz. Cooking King. Right, let's hope, uh, let's hope Nico lets us watch this because it's the last one. It's really good. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> for some reason, they felt it was appropriate for the main character to be whoever the fuck that guy is. And they gave Shoggy all those fluid animations, but this gets just meme to frame animation. Might be for the best. There's some uh, food and beverage related questions. <laughs> See that pose though, the pose it pulls. Those are pretty good. Hirame. What is Hirame? Remember that as a food. Remember from uh, all right. I think we're done with uh, Nico. I don't know, is he? Sure is an old dude. Time's low. Got yeah, like a power up that gets more time. Is he? Okay, he's got chopsticks now. Like every level, there's different uh, graphics. It's like part two, probably. Yeah. I wonder if I can find part one. Try right, finding part one. Search videos, copy paste.
Oh, dude. Dude, part one. Maybe this game has a sick intro. Uh, game is a fiction. <laughs> it's already pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is pretty quality intro. No effort, quality meme intro. The audio is so shit. Sounds like literally your most generic Super Nintendo game. All using the same sampled instruments. Yeah, Mari, just. How are you gonna win at it? I know I wouldn't, even though, even if I could pause and read everything accurate, accurately. I don't know. Does the character change? Is this like the first game and that was the second one? That could be. That was the was attraction mode. Okay, you choose your own guy and this guy picked the fucking DJ when there is a fucking guy with a rapier and fucking Segata Sanchiro <laughs> with padded leather bracelets and then some guy with a fucking giant um how do you call that Chinese knife again? A giant, uh, it's, it starts with the N. Forgot. This guy selected this cook. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, there's opponents. The old man is just an opponent. Okay, and you face other characters as other opponents. This is pretty good. This is pretty fucking good. Uh. Okay, that was the theme, wasn't it? Soft shell crab. Okay, so you get to choose your stuff and blah blah blah. And that was pretty cool. Alright, now on the list of one of the other Visco games I should play because it's fucking awesome. And also on the list of other guys that cannot upload a video in 4x3 on YouTube is Battle Flipshot 1988. This is pretty cool. And loud. It's got good music and definitely good characters and. I guess the tradition continues, because look at that face. Simon. <laughs> Simon, but it's written S A I Mon. I'm actually very much into these kind of games, so. And this is the only video in good quality that I could find in it, and it's 16 by 9. Imagine how shitty the other ones were. Right, so it's that kind of game, but you get to bash the ball and use your shield with uh, as far as mechanics go, so it's pretty interesting. I suppose you just win when you pick off all of the things beyond, beyond your opponent. So let's move on to Captain Tomade. This game I knew of as well, it's a vertical shmup where you literally control a tomato. Of course, most of these videos are provided by the god Shlauchi, my favorite player. He was even played in a Nintendo Marathon, I think by a Cracks Capacitor uh, on the Neo Geo CD, so this 
had its own uh, home release. Windjammers too, pretty much. This. <laughs> yeah. Let's up the volume a little bit. You know, this game is actually quality. I didn't play it myself, but it looks funny and it's got these hands mechanics. Like, yeah, you can... You see, you see that. You can use both hands. Super blow attack. Alright. Give us, give us something. A Captain Tomade became a monkey. Like a bonus stage with this boss fight. When does he become a monkey? He becomes a monkey here. Is that player two? I think that's fucking player two. No, it's not. Yeah, he shoots bananas. Oh, it's like an option. Oh. Did you get morphed into a frog? That's like bad. Oh, you transform with peels. Okay. Fair enough. Alright. Moving on. Almost done. Now this is the number one game I would like to play myself. Because it looks fucking amazing. And it's Gandryu. Hmm. All right. More text. His beloved Atsu. Okay. Spinning that shit up. Was one of missing. Why are the U capital like? Does two D graphic in the intro were much like uh, Captain Tomode? Well, yeah, for the intro, but if you look at the gameplay, it's, uh... Oh, you get to select a character. I didn't know that. His loser selects Musashi, of course. Look how good this looks. Oh, fuck your hour-long Neo Geo how-to-play screens. Yeah, look at this. I don't see much here, but the sprite already and the animation. Pretty cool. Backgrounds are a bit shitty, but the rest of the pixel art is really good. Like, really great. I like it a lot. Shame for those backgrounds, those are really shit. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything in as far as backgrounds go, sadly. Alright, Vasara is, I don't know, this is maybe their most known uh, shmup since it's got uh, two games to, to its name. You could say it spawned a series and they even list it under uh, their website, which I just noticed is advertised at the start of this, this game. Wow. So on the Visco screen, they um, they plug up their own website. That's cool. Asara is getting an HD release. Yes. It's just Vasara one for both games, I suppose. 
cool stuff. Let's quickly have a, a look at the sequel. Both. This is the last uh, shmup they made. This is actually, as far as I know, uh, the last game they made, period. Because after this... After this game, Visco entered uh, the metal game, the metal game market with uh, what I think is Hana Shibari, I don't know, which is about Hanafuda and is a metal game. I do not have a video of this, but uh, there is a page on the Visco website and God damn it, <laughs> they just cannot get it right, dudes. They just, it's, it's not, they, they can't, they can't get that right. You just cannot do uh, anime faces. <laughs> right, alt. Okay. So it is is a metal game about Hanafuda. Not much to uh, to say about it, but it is on their um, on their website. It is on their website, so we can have a quick look. Why not? Metal game, but it does have a video interface, of course, because it is Hanafuda. And there is some rules. Stuff. The card set. Uh, points, scoring points. Extra events. How to draw manga, number one. Episode one. Okay, then uh, they got what could have been maybe a hit for them, considering um, there's going to be a subsequent uh, iteration of this game called Clown Magic. Now, initially, due to the katakana spelling being the same, I thought this was Crown Magic until I saw the pictures. Now, if you go to the website, the same website advertised in the main, um, the Visco screen in Vasara. So visco.co.jp, uh, which is where I am right now, you go to the website and it's this. Immediately you see Clown Magic Cherry Rush, in the big center image. But up here on the, I guess you cannot see my cursor right now. Let's fix that. Oh my God, that's not fixing it. Uh, that's fixing it. Nope. Okay, yeah, you can see my cursor now. So here you see their metal games. Right, so uh, that we just saw, but there's a second edition, it seems. Hanashibari Hushikaden, which I didn't know about. So it's still a Hanafuda, still a metal game. Now, this is Clown Magic. Progressive clown magic, so it's just not some regular clown magic, and it's actually a slot game. So there's that. Reminds me, I had a really sick video of the Japanese guy getting hyped as fuck about this game. I think Royal Jockey Club. This uh, doesn't look like. Is light. Can't tell if this is a uh, uh, bedding, or if you have to somehow somewhat control your uh, your jockey. But judging from the picture, yeah, this is bedding. Wager and credits a thousand four hundred thirty six. So definitely bedding. Japan Derby Grand Prix. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is a an old website, yes. How long have you lived in Japan? Uh, one month in 2013. Yeah, I don't even speak Japanese. I'm I'm in Rome right now. <laughs> I speak Japanese, but I can only say three things. All right, so. That that is pretty much almost it. Uh, so much so that we're only gonna get briefly back uh, YouTube for 
a single video in a second. Now, before we start boogie woogie bullying, I want to talk a little bit about uh, their home market output, right? So what they actually put out on home systems. Now, aside from their drift out games and aside from the ver various and also quality, quality adaptations of uh, their Mahjong and Hanafuda games, so like uh, Jung Jung Shima Show and um, Koi Koi Shima Show, the Hanafuda game. They got cool versions on uh, PS1 and Saturn, I think both, for both of those. And they all look good and like they are different and improvements and they got a lot of dialogues and animated stuff. So they made proper versions of those for uh, the CD consoles. So they took out the arcade pays and gave them like a lot of dialogues with text and uh, anime sequences, I think even an anime opening. So we're not going to look at those because we already saw the originals, but just know they, they made home versions of those. So those were probably successful. So I think that that's maybe what led them uh, after the end of the 90s to move themselves towards the, the, the metal game market. But then again, I have no idea what these guys, what Visco uh, did post-2003. Uh, so Aside from that, the only thing really we're gonna have to look at is the Ellen series on PlayStation 1. We're gonna have a look because this seems to be a rare Visco console exclusive together with uh, Boogie Woogie Bowling and Bass Rush. Bass Rush is on the Dreamcast and Nintendo 64 and it's a fishing game. I'm not even gonna show you that, but it's just a fishing game. Let's uh, bring that back up. Open the link. Antoine, what's up? Yes, I did. I did cut my hair. To be honest, I always do though. It just grows very fast. I shave like once a month. Maybe, maybe more often. All right. Ellen Plus. This is Ellen Plus. Let's skip through a bit, but this uh, looks very interesting. I mean, it's it's completely different from, than uh, everything we've seen so far. So I can see them wanting to experiment for something like this on the PS1. But then again, you see some familiar elements like anime faces. So that's funny. Anime intro, but it's in 3D. You actually see this intro before. Hello, <laughs> No Man's Sky. That's a hello, all right. Ellen. Communicate simulation. <laughs> that wouldn't have sold out of Japan. Now with that sub. やっていきたいと思います。プレイステーション<笑> Okay, at least for the character selection screen, they managed to, to fix their anime faces by just making a triangular shape and trying really hard to keep it uh, symmetric as fuck. <laughs> right. Let's see how this develops. Naoka, 
楽しみだなキャラを知恵と変えて発見した早いね This guy only has a, a 800 views What the fuck? I'm gonna, I'm gonna thumbs up that shit I'm gonna subscribe to the guy Let's move to something that isn't just tax. Ooh, shit. Look at the guy. Sugai na. I'm really excited about this, the guy. It's got this 3D CGI shit, which is really like a uh, high effort. But then it's got Visco faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at the, the guy's hands. The guy was impressed. There was voice acting already. Saying he's a beta male. Right. There's a lot of this, right? But then there is actually walking around. First week, time to the final test. There's kind of sort of countdown shit. It looks, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Road to ten thousand subs. How many do you have? I can't tell. Alright, you move around, you interact with objects. Ooh, okay, there's stats. The fuck, look at that. Stress bar? Oh, dude, stress bar. Is it like uh, the Call of Cthulhu tabletop? Or well, you have like a sanity bar? Nice. I don't know what else you get to do in the game, but you level up and you have a mood. The guy is sad now. Did they seriously fix their lack of knowing how to draw faces by just fucking uh, making them as generic as possible? Look, you, you even gain stats by training and shit. Yeah, it's taking techie. Alright, so that's, that's, uh, that's a little pick of the Alien series, I suppose. Interesting to look at what they did that was unique on the um, on the consoles, you know? Uh, the other game would be Base Rush. I guess we can uh, Dreamcast. It's on the Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. What's up, Bobby? Uh, this is a Russian video. It's on Dreamcast. <laughs> Dreamcast. It's it's a fishing game. It looks good. Looks smooth, but uh, oh, so much to it to show. Time, time, time it's one of those fishing games. Dad, what's up? Uh, okay, that is pretty much it. Now, they also seem to be somewhat involved uh, with the Mega Drive version of Mega Twins, which is Chicky Chicky Buys. Or at least Tomohiro Ono was. He figures in those credits under special things. Now the composer, the the thing I like to research about the most for Boogie Woogie Wooling, is a total mystery to me because it's credited as Nakamiti, and I obviously have no clue as to who the fuck that might be. Uh, it would be fair to assume it's probably some person that made other Visco games music, but it looks like Nakamiti might be a play on Nakamichi which is a Japanese electronics brand who specialized on audio stuff and made a name for itself in the 70s with high quality cassette decks. That is all I know. And that is all I'm gonna talk about before I play the game, but 